you've won your next commercial solar project and you're looking at what panels are out there and the larger ones seem to be a bit more expensive per watt than the smaller ones. So the question is, which panel are you going to pick? Nelly here from Greenwood Solutions. Big panels versus small, pros and cons. That's what you're gonna find out after watching this video. How much does a smaller panel need to be, cheaper wise, than a big panel to become viable? Now, if you like these videos and you want us to make more of them, hit that subscription button, tell your friends, get them to hit the button as well, and let's get stuck into it. When solar panels first became available to the mass market, their wattage rating was fairly small. Around 2009, a large panel was 185 watts, but as time goes by, the size of the panels is steadily increasing. Within the commercial solar sphere, panels of around 450 watts seem to be the most popular, but currently there is a shortage due to high demand and other factors. This presentation will look at the viability of using a lower wattage panel say 370 to 380 watt on the assumption that the dollar cost per watt is lower than the larger panels some of these bigger panels are starting to get up over the 25 kilo mark and really when it comes to the installation side of things you must take into consideration the fatigue of the guys on site carrying these panels and placing them in position a slightly lighter panel will leave you a lot more refreshed at the end of the day compared to say one of these really large panels. Obviously a larger panel will take less time to install than a smaller panel to achieve a desired system size. And the smaller panels will require more panel framing and associated fixtures, more DC cable, more cable tray, and effectively more time on the roof. At the end of the day, we need to assess the material install cost ratio taking into account as many factors as possible. The difference between the size of the panels becomes apparent from a DC perspective. Not so much from the AC side, as in the example we are about to discuss, it is assumed that the inverter component and the number of DC strings is the same. This is because with the smaller panels, the VOC max figure is lower than say a bigger panel, and this results in longer strings, say 20 panels, compared to 16 panels for a larger footprint. The basis of the comparison revolves around a framing spreadsheet that calculates how much rail is required and requisite fittings per row and the associated total area that the panels take up. We will be assuming the same cost for materials for each example and allocate further costs including cost per panel to install, cost per meter to install the rail, cost per meter to install the cable tray, cost per meter to install the cable. We will be looking at two panels, a 450 watt JA panel, high VOC max, so 16 panels per string. And the second panel is a 370 watt trainer panel. It's got a low VOC max, so you can put 20 panels per string. The system size we're looking at is 468 kilowatts. Yeah, funny number composing of 65 rows for the larger panels and 64 for the smaller ones. This is due to the difference in string lengths, 20 panels for the smaller footprint compared to 16 panels for the larger one as previously mentioned. With the smaller panels, this results in more frame being used and of course the amount of associated fittings, feet, rail, joiners, etc. And you can see that in the table below. And we are using 4,000 mil rail for this example. Obviously with a smaller panel, the actual square area of your install is gonna be larger to achieve the same system size as a larger panel. And that will result in more cable tray and more tray. And the calculations presented in this presentation do take that into consideration. So what I've done is I've calculated the overall meter squared area of both the 450 watt panels and the smaller panel 
uh, both 468 kilowatt systems and then extrapolated from there in regards to uh, cable cost, uh, cable runs uh, and cable tray runs as well. Uh, you have to take everything into consideration. Price for materials is on a per metre basis. An install cost is also based per metre, but install for panels is based per panel. Cable and cable tray costs were derived from the total area of the designs encompassed. And you can see that in the table below. Now let's assume that the pricing given is fairly accurate. So one question is, how much does the smaller panel price per watt need to be to equal the overall cost of the larger panel design? Now Excel has an interesting set of functions that fall under the what if analysis mantle. And one of these functions is goal seek. And by using this, we get an answer. The smaller panel has to be $0.387 a watt so a little over 38 cents a watt compared to the larger panel, which is at 41 cents a watt. Okay, it's about a three cent difference per watt. Now I have assigned a value of $20 per panel to install. So what if I halve this to $10 a panel and ask the same question again? The answer this time is 0.385 cents a watt to match the larger panel design. So we can see a very slight decrease compared to when the panel install cost per unit is $20. So how much is this in dollar terms? The number of larger panels is 1,040 times $10 to install 10,400. The number of smaller panels is 1,265 by $10 equals 12,650 bucks. So a fair difference. If we change the install price for the cable tray, from $2 a metre to $10 a metre, the price needs to be 0.382 cents a watt. As solar panels become even larger, they start to stray into the two-person lift area. If this is the case, the viability of a smaller footprint panel may be a good option. Now, this presentation has assumed a roof mount scenario and with ground mount, things start to change. The framing proportionally is higher than with roof mount panels, cost-wise. So the larger footprint wattage panels may be the go for these systems. Another thing to remember is that the really large panels may need a third rail system due to the belly effect when installed on a fairly flat commercial roof. So take this into consideration when making your assessment. Another aspect with the larger panels is the surface area. So on these large commercial sites, roof mount when you may be 11, 12, 13 metres in the air, they can get pretty damn windy. Uh, and in the morning, you can install these panels and maybe later on in the afternoon, you're restricted to these periods where it, there's less wind. Realistically, again, you're gonna be able to install a lot less um, 450 watt panels um, in a day than say the smaller footprint. Conclusion, when assessing the viability of particular panel dimensions and associated wattages, the designer must take into account the material install cost ratio of the various components involved, as well as labor, fatigue, time spent on site, the amount of packaging, rubbish, and roof mount versus ground mount and more. The larger wattage panels appear on paper to be the better option. But if there is a substantial dollar per watt differential, then maybe a smaller panel is the go. With any project costing, all has to be taken into account. Good luck on your next project. Thanks so much for watching this presentation on big panels versus small. Some pretty interesting stuff came out. It actually surprised me. I'm Veli from Greenwood. If you like what you see, hit that subscription button. And if you have any questions, any inquiries, any answers, feel free to drop us a line. See you next time.